So a positron walks into a bar and explodes. I'm talking about antimatter here, and its well-known sci-fi property of exploding at a moment's notice. But the sci-fi concept of matter-antimatter annihilation isn't sci-fi at all. It's real physics, and in large quantities would be extraordinarily violent. So how does it work? Well, step one is get some antimatter. That's the hard part. Step two, get some matter. It's a bit easier. Step three is just putting them together. But if we want annihilation, we have to be a little careful about what kind of antimatter we have. See, antimatter only annihilates when it meets its exact opposite. So a positron, which is an antimatter electron, will only annihilate with electrons. An antiproton will only annihilate with a proton. So what happens? Most often when you have matter-antimatter annihilation, two or more photons are produced, each carrying away some portion of the total energy equivalent of the mass of the original particles. And it's photons because they're the easiest particles to make. They have no mass and they interact with almost every type of matter. The question then is, how? I'm going to try to explain the simplest case, an electron and a positron annihilating, with an analogy. Imagine a fabric with bunched up twists in various directions. Clockwise twists are electrons and counterclockwise twists are positrons. Now, when two opposite twists meet each other, there's a way that the fabric can change such that both twists get undone. But those twists, being electrons and positrons, also change the underlying electromagnetic field as they move around. And the electromagnetic field can't change abruptly. So when those two opposite twists meet each other and undo each other, the electromagnetic field can't instantly go away. Instead, it rings. And that's exactly what photons are. They're what happens when the electromagnetic field rings. And those photons have to get their energy from somewhere, and it's precisely from the stored energy of the original twists. Now, to be sure, this is merely a very rough sketch of what's actually happening, but it conveys the idea of how changes in the underlying matter fields resulting in cancellation can give rise to matter-antimatter annihilation.